Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am just starting off by trimming my natural nail. I do not like to have any type of growth underneath whenever I am doing specifically a new set of nails as mentioned in my last video. So I am taking my hand file. This is my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. These are my all time favorite. And I'm just very quickly filing that excess off. You can absolutely clip them off. However, I just feel like I get a cleaner finish with a hand file. I'm going to be prepping my natural nail with a mandrel bit and a sanding band from Profiles Backstage. These are medium grit. I love these bits because they are super fine. Even though it is medium grit, it is not going to damage your natural nail. Always make sure you are using very light pressure and using your e-file at a low speed. For today's video, I am using the Kiara Sky Rechargeable e-file. This one is their unicorn one and I have her at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. That's my comfortable speed for my prep. I feel like if I go any higher, it is going to be a little bit more likely that I damage my natural nail. So I am going in with very light pressure at a low speed. Now, as you can tell from the title, I am going to be doing my nails with my non-dominant hand. I am right-handed. So everything you're going to be seeing in today's video is going to be using my left hand. Throughout the years, I've definitely gotten better. So I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of tips that have helped me throughout the years. Now you will be able to peep that little gnat that keeps flying into frame. And then I smacked it, not thinking I was actually going to get it, but it is now dead. It's funny because I've had appearances of flies in my videos before, so I figured I would just leave that footage in. So the first thing that I feel like has helped me tremendously when it comes to doing my nails with my left hand is stabilizing my right hand on something. Originally, I started stabilizing my hand on the edge of the table. It just helps have your hand nice, still, and in place so that you can do whatever you need to do with your left hand. You're already going to be struggling, so you don't want your right hand to be moving all over the place. So I started off using the edge of my table for that. And then as I got into doing videos, I needed something right in front of my camera frame. So I started using this little container. This container is honestly from the bath section in TJ Maxx and I use it to hold my sanding bands. All of them are in there and I just use this as I feel like it's the perfect height for my videos. So if you do not have a container, do not worry. Use your table, use a box, use whatever you have on hand, but make sure you are stabilizing your hand. Now moving on to the next step, I am using my e-file, still at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my needle bit. It is my favorite prep bit. It helps get into that hard to reach area. And believe it or not, even though you feel like you might file off all of that dead skin with your mandrel bit, you can see from this process, you still leave quite a bit behind. And if you are wanting to really minimize your lifting issues you want to make sure you are properly prepping your natural nail and this is going to help have very little to no lifting so make sure you guys check these out they are my favorite Now I'm going in and using my cuticle ball bit. This is going to gently buff off that dead skin from the cuticle area without having to cut or nip any of that off. It's just my personal preference. You can absolutely nip and cut them off if you prefer to do so. I just like this method a lot better. Now, another quick little tip when using your e-file specifically with your non-dominant hand, I like to focus on 
using it in one motion and I like to do it away from my hand if that makes sense. So as you can see I'm filing towards the right side of my hand and I just feel like I get better grasp of everything if I do it just in one direction. Now I'm going to be quickly applying my tips. These are the extra long straight score tips from Not Polish. These are full sculpted and they have the perfect square shape in my opinion. They are not overly wide as some tips tend to be when they are squared. I am carefully applying these with the Young Nails brush on glue. It is my favorite glue, especially when applying tips and crystals. It is a game changer to have a brush. Now I'm just going ahead and applying them very carefully and applying a good amount of pressure so that they stay nice and still where you place them. Now when it comes to trimming the nails down to the length that I desire, I am taking my nail tip cutters and carefully measuring them to my hand that I have already previously done and then I'm going to be comparing them finger to finger and trimming them that way. If you guys are interested in seeing the process on how I did the look on my left hand, make sure you guys check out that video. I did recently post that. So make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel and turn on your post notifications so that you do not miss any future videos that I upload. Once I'm done trimming the nail, I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe. And I am quickly dehydrating the nail while cleaning off any excess dust. This is working as a dehydrator. If you don't have Young Nail Swipe, go ahead and use some alcohol. That helps as well. Now I'm taking my Triple X Bond Primer from Not Polish and applying a coat of that on my natural nail. You do not have to apply this on the tip as the acrylic will naturally adhere very well to that tip. Now I am also going to be adding a second coat of that onto my natural nail just to ensure that I have zero zero lifting. Trust me, it makes all the difference. If you're doing your prep work properly, you should be good to go and the nails should stay on for as long as you desire. Now getting right into our acrylic application, I am using the Not Polish acrylic brush in the size 12. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic monomer as well, also known as Nail Liquid. And I am going ahead and using this beautiful nude color that I also used on my left hand. It is called Nude Me, also from Not Polish. I'm taking a large bead of acrylic and applying that in the middle section and then gently working it down towards the tip. Now I've mentioned this a ton in all of my videos where I use Not Polish. Their products are super easy to work with. Once you get your liquid to powder ratio down perfect, you should be golden. Your application process should be super smooth. Their products are really easy to work with. Very, very blendable. Smooth like butter, how they say it as their slogan. So basically I'm using very light pressure, very light tapping motions and when I get to the tip I want to make sure that I am cleaning it as best as possible. This is going to help minimize filing process at the end so I make sure that I am tucking it in on the sides, tapping it, making sure that I'm cleaning it very nicely along with that tip. You want to make sure you are making it as clean as possible. Now when it comes to the cuticle area, always remember to hold your finger in a downward position specifically for today's video because I am doing it with my non-dominant hand and I'm still trying to record. It was a little bit tricky to hold it downwards without being out of frame or not being able to see it at all. So I tried to do it very quickly to where it wouldn't run in the cuticle area and for the most part I did a pretty good job. It was a little bit of a struggle but I did it. Again, a large bead of acrylic near that middle section, and then I am quickly going to be cleaning the sides, gently dragging it down, using very light tapping motions to do so. Typically, when you are holding your finger in a downward position, the product will naturally flow down towards the tip. So for the most part, you definitely do not need to do too much working. However, because I'm doing it the opposite way, you will see me kind of work the product a little bit more. I am just adding a small bead of acrylic at that tip as I did not eyeball the amount that I needed correctly. 
and then I'm going to be working my way up towards the cuticle area and finishing that nail off. Again, very light pressure, very light tapping motions, and making sure that I'm holding the finger in a position where the product is not going to spill everywhere. Now, as this gets very repetitive, I am just going to go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this process. Again, if you need to, make sure you stabilize your hand on a sturdy surface, whether it's your table, a box, a container. Make sure you are stabilizing it and that will help you tremendously. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this and then I will be back on in the next step. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know
broken plans so we can start again Won't turn down a second chance, I'm too selfish for that I let you fall again, now that you know that I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was once we are done, I am getting into my filing process. So for the purpose of this video and because I'm trying to share with you guys the best way to do your nails with your non-dominant hand, I'm going to fully recommend you use a hand file. For the longest time, I did not use an e-file with my left hand and I still had the exact same results if not a little bit better using my hand file so definitely recommend use your hand file if you need to there is not an issue with that whatsoever so i am using my tammy taylor peel and stick file i am starting off filing the sides the tip and then the surface of the nail now when it comes to the cuticle area you do want to be extra extra careful because you can nick yourself cut yourself whatever you want to call it and then another quick little tip, a lot of people will complain about these tips because they are really C-curved, which means you have a little bit of excess tip on the bottom. I just take my hand file and just gently file the underneath of it. And you'll see me throughout this process do that on a few of the nails. So if you want to pay attention to that, I'm just quickly filing it very lightly to kind of flatten that a little bit. And then again, I'm just going to quickly file the surface of the nail, making sure everything flows nice and straight from the cuticle area down to the tip. And then very, very carefully, we're going to file around the cuticle area. Again, I am using my container to stabilize my hand slightly so that it doesn't wiggle all over the place so I don't cut myself and so I get that cuticle area nice and flush to my natural nail. Now another quick little tip on how to hand file using your non-dominant hand, whether it be in your left or right hand. I'm going to be using my dominant hand to do most of the filing. So for the most part, I am stabilizing my hand file and trying to keep it as still as possible. Of course, there are certain areas where I am actually moving. As you can see right here, I am moving it very slightly. However, I am moving more my right hand. I am assisting that filing process using my dominant hand because I know I have better motion and control of my right hand. So if you are trying this, you will notice that it helps a lot. Again, stabilizing and then I'm trying to file in one motion versus go back and forth, especially on that cuticle area. Again, always remember to use your dominant hand to help yourself.
Once I'm done filing the sides, the surface, and the cuticle area, I'm taking my hand file and filing that free edge, making sure that I am squaring off those nails as best as possible. You just want to hold your hand file horizontally and again, assisting my filing process with my right hand. I'm taking my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and I'm going to be quickly buffing the surface of the nail. This is going to create the perfect canvas for our nail art that we are about to create. Taking another lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe, I'm going to quickly clean the surface of my nail so I can get started on my nail art. You can absolutely go and wash your hands. I just prefer this method as I feel like it is a lot quicker. And we are back with the Gel Art Liner Kit from Profiles Backstage. These have quickly become my favorite. And you guys, we are officially in fall, so it is okay to be obsessed with these nude colors. Now I'm quickly taking out a few of the colors that I'm going to be using. I am starting off with Latte for my thumb. For today's video, we are going to be doing another nail trend. Trust me, I have been dying to hop on these trends since I've been on maternity leave. So I am so excited to be back and finally doing these for you guys and trying them out for myself, honestly speaking. Taking that Latte color, I am going to quickly draw a random line and then we're going to be infilling that i'm basically taking cow print meets snakeskin if that makes sense i feel like that's the best way to describe the look that i came up with so again taking that latte color trying to randomly draw blobs on there and infilling that very lightly you want to make sure you're working with very thin layers specifically with this gel paint when i tell you the pigment is opaque it is opaque. If you watched my last video where I used these, you will notice why I say that. If you missed it, make sure you go check those out. I transform my crusty toes into fall toenails. <laughs> now I'm taking that same color and doing another small blob towards the tip. And this is going to work as our base color for that print we are going to create. Now from the start, I am going to tell you guys, you need to cure this gel paint for at least one minute and I have been doing two minutes to be safe because it is super opaque which means you need to fully fully cure it otherwise it will not turn out how you think it should turn out now I'm taking the cream color and I am applying that on my index finger again this is going to be our base color and as you can see I'm struggling to do this straight line <laughs> so taking out my handy container I'm going to stabilize my hand and finally draw it a little bit nicer <laughs> now again very carefully outlining that and then we're gonna be infilling the rest very light coat of it because 
you will struggle trust me i'm telling you this so make sure you're trying to do it as thin as possible and curing it in the light for a minute or two minutes i'm going to go ahead and finish that off and we're going to be moving on to the rest of the nails i'm going to be alternating different colors just randomly and random spots as well so i'll let you guys watch that process Once we're done with our base color, you can tell that it really gives off cow print vibes. Again, very strong about this. Place it in your light for a full minute. If you wanna be extra like me, place it in there for two minutes, but please make sure you are curing it for a good time because everything will just be ruined. Trust me, I know what I'm telling you guys. <laughs> Now I'm taking Gel Melt. This is essentially Blossom or Blooming Gel from Profiles Backstage. Now I have talked about their website so, so much and I love their products, their company, the prices, the customer service. Everything is amazing. So make sure you guys check out their website. Very affordable products, very great quality. I love them so, so much. And don't forget to use my discount code as it will save you guys a little bit of money. I'm going to link all the products down below. So make sure you guys check that out. Now for our snake skin, very, very simple. You're going to add a layer of that gel melt polish. And then we are adding whatever color you want. I decided to use the brown color to accent that tan color very nicely. And I'm adding a long line right in the center and then I am just dotting a few dots on the sides and then you're gonna let it do its thing. It's going to very quickly blossom, bloom, and melt that color. 
and then once you are content with the design you're going to quickly pop that in the light i am just flash curing this in between as we're going to be fully curing it at the end once again again a thin layer of that gel melt polish and i'm just using my 3d nail art brush to apply it specifically on top of that color that we placed and as it's still wet we are applying the color that your heart desires for this one i added the pumpkin one which is a nice burnt orange again long lines in the center and then on the sides basically like where there's an empty spot i'm adding little dots and then again you're letting it blossom bloom and melt <laughs> and then you see it kind of transform very quickly and i love it it is my new favorite design very easy to achieve as well flash curing that and we're moving on to the next nail I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of this process, alternating the colors once again, and then we're gonna be fully curing it at the end. As we're finishing the final nail, make sure you leave it in the light for a full two minutes so that every single layer cures fully. Now I'm taking matte it from Not Polish. At this precise moment, I realized that I probably should have top coated the matte portion first. I do this, I feel like, every time in my videos, but I didn't even think about it. I was just really excited to do the nail art. So quick little tip, make sure you top coat your matte before you do your nail art if you're going to be doing two types of finishes. It just makes your life a lot easier and you don't have to be doing what I'm doing in this process. But if you forget, 
very quickly take a little bit place it on whatever surface you have take a 3d nail art brush or whatever brush you want that's a little bit thicker and then just go in and apply it where you want to apply it i'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails and then we're going to be fully curing that in the light once again And because I did want that print to stand out very nicely, we're gonna be top coating it with Gloss It From Not Polish. And again, just very carefully outlining that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that off on the rest of the nails. And then once again, we're curing that in the light for a full minute or two minutes. Once everything is fully cured, we are finishing off this set with some cuticle oil. Of course, use your favorite, but my favorite is the Profiles Backstage one. It smells so good and it soaks right into your skin without leaving an oily cast, which for me and my pictures and my finish results, I want it to be nice and mattified. So definitely recommend this one if you are looking for a good cuticle oil. And I'm carefully applying that around my cuticle area because I do have matte finish on my nails and I don't want it to leave any shiny cast on that matte top coat. basically concludes today's video let me know what you guys think down below what is your favorite color combo that i used for this set i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned a ton do not forget to like share comment and subscribe and i will see you guys next time